So it's been two weeks since the last uh, video update. I'm going to start again in the living room. So since then, uh, what's been done here is the plasterboards have been put up uh, to finish that wall. The switches and sockets are all in. Um, kind of did some changes to the lighting, how we're going to lay out the lighting in the living room so that we can have a, well, a nicer table than an OSB sheet with a light over the table at some stage. So yeah, some small adjustments. We're working this in an agile way. And then in the kitchen over the past two weeks, or two weeks ago, um, we put in some liquid screed uh, to level out the floor a little bit. We can't build it too high up because we have to insulate the floor and then the floor heating will come in. But that was, um, yeah, not perfect. It should be, well, should be flat. 19 sacks of uh, fluid uh, screed carried up, mixed by hand. So by the time one corner was done and moved on to the next row, it was already drying out, so we couldn't get the nice leveling effect. So we'll get some uh, perlite um, kind of grains to uh, act as insulation and fill in any small hollows there might be, and then uh, have a kind of a system that has insulation and uh, panels that the underfloor heating pipes sit into. We have to make sure everything is sealed because then we're going to pour fluid screed on top of all of that as well, four to five centimeters thick. So the sides have to be completely uh, sealed because if uh, any of that stuff gets under the insulation, then the floor will start floating and that will not be good. So um, we're going to start maybe doing that during the coming week. And uh, yeah, because like I said before, kitchen is coming, it needs to be done. Moving on through to the bedroom and office, nothing major changed here except, okay, the window is fitted in finally. Can't remember, was that done two weeks ago? But we also started oiling the uh, the beams in the ceiling. This has made them quite a bit darker. So for these ones, it's um, kind of okay that they had a kind of a light honey color. So they haven't darkened too much. Nice sheen off them though. Uh, this one I had use an angle grinder and a sanding disc to get off that patina which I almost regretted but actually I quite quite like that but it's quite dark after the oiling and the focus and the beam over the door um, is quite red so it's, again it's oak but a uh, slightly different shade it gives it a reddish tone after it's been oiled <clears throat> then we started in here but it does bring the beams out a bit, gives a nice contrast, and you can imagine when the clay is um, uh, the clay plaster is painted, kind of an old white, not brilliant white, kind of an old-fashioned white, um, that will give a nice a nice contrast there. So the stuff we're using is just normal um, pure oil, uh, applying it with a brush, and uh, for the ceilings for the clay, we got this. Uh, lame Festiga, which is a uh, calcium silicate, not good for the eyes, but we'll use a roller to apply that to the clay plaster. Um, so it'll basically stop it from, yeah, stop any dust to keep it kind of nice and firm before the painting. And it's also a natural breathable material. And we have just a quick show here. You can see the difference on the right is an unoiled beam and the left is an oiled beam. Um, so you can see that color difference. It's nice because it brings out the grain, the knots and stuff like this. So I mean, a lot of work was spent cleaning these beams. And I guess the oil kind of brings out the kind of nice character of the wood a little bit more. I can't, I'm not sure what that's going to look like because this is also my favorite part of this room, the old door frame. It's two massive oak posts and they're going to be again quite dark and very reddish color uh, when oils. But yeah, maybe after a couple of months the, the oil will uh, fade a little bit so it's not so strongly dark. Let's go upstairs then. I have to finish this wall. It's a useful shelving system at the moment. And up the stairs. So the clay plaster is now finished in the ceilings up here as well. I think the last video there were, they weren't. There was only the undercoating done. So all of this will get the same treatment as what we just saw. That's fantastic. And finally permanent floor down. And all that yellow stuff is indicating where cables are. My son was helping there so we don't put any screws through when putting the floors down. 
And uh, yeah, in here, got the plasterboard finished down at the end and sockets in and then also on this side we got the um for the dormer window as well so osb sheets on the side so that's ready to receive then a uh, uh, windowsill and uh, then put in the plaster boards and uh, that this will be almost finished there's only some kind of fine plastering to do on the clay walls here and some yeah as before on the on the regular walls as well, fine plaster has to be done. And uh, moving on through. So I started on this yesterday. So again, the under construction to get the um, the plaster boards on. And this is what the kind of opes beside on the dormers actually look like before the OSB goes on. So the OSB is needed to give a bit more uh, support for the uh, for the plaster boards. And then I also got this side done, and that was that was fun. That was quite complicated doing it for the uh, for the um, roof light. <clears throat> A little bit more complicated, so it took longer than I expected. But once the kind of wooden framing framework was done underneath, uh, putting the plasterboards up and cutting them to shape so they fit exactly was quite okay. Yeah, so this room is also coming on. Um, plasterboard nearly finished so the idea is that get, basically get all the plasterboard work finished get them all up and then start the uh, the kind of filling and sanding work that has to that goes with that but really this week coming week need to focus on the kitchen floor if possible that's it